So today we are in the Butler Soil and Water Conservation District ACE site. This is where we have all of our cover crop plots, our warm season grass buffers, and some of our pollinator buffers that we've done previous videos on. And what we're doing today is we're actually going to demo this four foot cover crop roller. And this is manufactured by the INJ company out of Pennsylvania. This is uh, one of their smaller models. This is actually the smallest model they make. The next largest one up is a 10 footer. Uh, this one is kind of unique because you can pull it behind an ATV. We're actually going to pull it behind the Soil and Water District's gator today. If you had a smaller utility tractor, um, you could pull it behind that. But this is nice because it actually does not require a three-point hitch. It just has a draw bar here. Um, it weighs about 800 pounds empty. Um, it does have a removable plug that you can add your liquid ballast to it. That way we're not running any ballast in it today. It's, it's, in my opinion, it's plenty heavy as is. Um, and this is a flip over model. So it's kind of similar to the older uh, that call to packers that used to be on a lot of farms. Whereas uh, right now we're in transport mode and the blades are several inches off the ground. So that gives us enough ground clearance to pull it down the road. Uh, we do have this, like I, I mentioned, it's in the draw bar uh, configuration right now. Um, there is a removable piece to the hitch where you could pull it behind a pickup truck. You can actually insert another different hitch piece which has a two inch ball on it so you could pull this down the road behind a vehicle if you needed to um, it does bounce a little bit that's the only drawback to it but if you're not going very far you're just going around the farm that's another good option to have um, but i'm going to do a demonstration here on how you flip it over into transport mode in just a second and then we're going to go out and actually roll some of our cover crops that we planted in 2020 we're getting ready here in the next couple weeks to plant cover crops again hopefully around the first week of july so i'm going to demonstrate how to flip this over there's a couple safety things um, again like i mentioned before this is 800 pounds i want to make sure that it's not going to roll off and once you reach a certain point in the flipping process there's a lot of leverage that's pulling the hitch to the other side so you want to make sure that nobody's standing in the way you want to keep your arms your jaw your face everything out of the way of this thing and i'll show you here in just a second so it's starting to pull here just a little bit over a half turn and i'm just going to let it go really gently okay now the roller is engaged the blades are touching the ground and you can begin rolling your cover crop. So farmers use cover crop rollers. It's a similar idea to a lawn roller. It's, it's a heavy steel drum, but the purpose is a little bit different. So a farmer chooses to use a cover crop roller to terminate a cover crop. So the reason it has these steel bands in this formation welded to the drum is they're in a V shape because that way there is more of each band making contact with the cover crop. These are ineffective when the bands are welded straight across. They have to be in this pattern so the, the, the band completely engages with the crop. So with the heavy ballast that this thing has, but again, we don't actually have any water in it because it weighs about 800 pounds on its own. And honestly, it's enough for our gator to be able to just pull it as is. And I don't want to imagine at 
eight or so pounds a gallon with the weight of water, it, it would be a, a lot for this gator to pull it. So if you had something bigger, a little more powerful, like a farm tractor, you know, a utility tractor or something of that nature, it would be manageable. Um, and that's there, again, just something that you can adjust to the field conditions. So if, if you felt like it wasn't working good enough, you could add more ballast to it to give it more ground pressure just to get a better termination. There are other models of these that have the ability to have hydraulic down pressure. So if you have a tractor with hydraulics, you can use the down pressure on those to get a better kill. But this is just eliminating the need for herbicides. So with the cover crop, there's a cost per acre of that and a farmer is trying to reduce inputs every year. So your seed, your chemical, your fertilizer, cover crop is another input. But the good thing about cover crops is they can, they can reduce herbicide use on a farm. They can reduce nutrient commercial fertilizer use on a farm and they can also help retain water. So a, a crop roller like this is just making cover crops more sustainable for the farmer. They're making cover cropping going to that style, that system of farming. It just makes it more affordable. So just to explain and demonstrate the action that each band does on the cover crop rollers it rolling, as it's rolling across the field. So each band, as it pushes the crop over, those metal bands are snapping the stem of the cover crop. And this right here is cereal rye. It's headed out, it's mature. It's, the stem is still very green and all you're doing is there's a snap right here and there's a snap right here from each band and the reasoning for that is is this prevents the rye from coming back if you just rolled it over and you didn't snap the stem there's a chance that it would stand back up so this by snapping the stem at multiple locations this effectively terminates the cover crop it also works with other cover crops as well so if you notice this particular mix has hairy vetch in it. The hairy vetch is really tall, it's very mature. There's also some crimson clover in here, though sporadic. Uh, some of it didn't survive the winter, but that is the cover crop roller at work. So I, I just had a few closing thoughts that I wanted to go over before the end of the video. Um, as you watch, you may have noticed that other areas, the, the roller was more effective than it was others. Um, some of that can actually be attributed to soil moisture. So it's actually better to roll your cover crop, to terminate it, when it's dry than it is if it's wet because you want the each blade to make good contact with the ground and the cover crop needs to be between that. Whereas if you have soft soil, it's just gonna sink in and you're not going to get as effective termination. You're also going to create uh, small strips of micro compaction just from the weight of the roller. But we didn't really have that much of an issue here at our site today. Uh, there is a small wet area that the roller was sinking in a lot and it was actually a lot harder to pull through that area. So not only when the soil is dried, you have more effective termination it's also easier to pull for your tractor. And density of cover crop also makes it easier to terminate. So you want a cover crop that's mature and tall and you know it's just beginning to set seed because anything shorter than that, if you have a cover crop that's eight to 10 inches tall, this isn't gonna do a very good job. The blades on this are only four to six inches and a cover crop that's not much taller than that's not going to have very good termination at that point you're better off to wait to terminate it another thought is so the reason we're rolling this today is basically for demonstration purposes we are going to plant some pumpkin seeds or not even pumpkin seeds but actual pumpkin plants into some of the thicker stands of the rye and hairy veg plot but if you were planting this with a no-till planter just for regular row crops like corn and soybeans you would want to go 
the same direction with your planter as you did with the roller. If you're going against the row or the opposite direction that you were going with the roller as you were with the planter, the planter is going to have a really hard time going through the field. You're going to notice a lot of wrapping and it's even going to have some trouble getting into the ground. So if rolling the same way or at the same time you plant isn't an option, one method that some people are doing is actually planting green into the cover crop. So they're taking their planter out and they're actually going to plant into a standing living cover crop and then going through later after you plant with the roller to get it flat. There won't be any issues with any corn or soybeans coming up through the cover crop. Uh, with the size of the seed and the vigor of the seed, there's not going to be an issue. That's, that's how the cover crop is able to suppress weeds, but not your cash crop. Again, thanks for tuning in today, and please check out some of our other videos.